3,025 pounds as shown here. Although understand as we go through this one, if you look at a GeoPro order sheet and you basically check off every single box you possibly can, that's this is what it's going to look like. It's got the off-road package, the uh, front uh, bike rack, the air conditioner. Everything you can basically add to this one has been applied, which has dinged the weight tag a little bit. Um, as they would commonly be built here, we wouldn't normally put on the bike rack or the off-road package, but uh, this is one that Rockwood had open and available, and with the popularity of the Geo Pros, we scooped it right up. It's a 16BH, tiny little uh, bunkhouse model here at Halo RV. Um, so, you know, it might fall just above or just below 3,000 pounds, and this is hands down one of, if not the best, uh, purpose-built, like, boondocking dry campers I've ever seen, but it still has tons to offer for park camp people. One of many good aspects of this floor plan is that with that slide-out closed, you can still get through it. You can still access everything in its entirety. You can get to the bathroom, you can get to the bunks, you can get to every ounce of storage. You don't need the slide. The slide-out just makes it so much better. To maintain their size and weight target, Rockwood had to get a little creative with this one, and your front family dinette up here converts into what's probably going to become the master sleeping zone. Now, you can kind of use this floor plan in a few different ways. If you don't plan on using the dinette portion, if you plan on mostly taking a table outside or something like that, it's nothing to just like get one of those big chunks of uh, you know um, custom cut foam and throw that down on here and just leave it as a bed the whole time. There's nothing that says you can't do that. And in point of fact, similar floor plans we've had from other brands, that's often what people have done. Um, however, you always maintain the flexibility of, I guess you could say, putting the bed away and converting this into that big family U dinette during the daytime. So, um, you know, it's, it's very much a dual use or flexible use camper. Uh, you know, good for singles, couples, or small families. It really just depends on what your camping style and preferences are. So during the daytime, you can open this up, and I mean that is a for adult comfortable U dinette. Um, you may also notice uh, as we look back down here that they included triple pedestals down here. Now pedestals are off-putting to a lot of people, but it's because they're often done poorly. Um, and if there's one thing Rockwood doesn't do, it's execute things poorly. So the triple uh, post system is going to keep that table sturdy and stable. So that, oh, I like the sound of that, table sturdy and stable. Anyway, um, it, uh, it'll keep it from kind of wiggle wobbling around, which is a scientific term I learned in RV nerd school. <clears throat> anyway, um, the other thing is if you really look at the placement and if you think about how your legs are going to slide around that table, they have those posts placed in the perfect position so that you don't go knee banging around that thing. And as long and tall as I am, I slid all the way around that doing the little butt scoot boogie and had no problems. Now, they, that's a very large table and they also made it very lightweight. So it's not going to be too heavy to manipulate if you do want to flip it up and down. Now, in t usually whenever you see a big u dinette like this, you start going, okay, what kind of storage do I have under it? You do and you don't. You don't really have interior storage access to it. All of the panels below the seating are actually screwed down, but there's reasons for it. If you look over here, you can see that you've got wiring, you've got venting, you've got things in the way. If you look over here, you can actually see uh, what I believe is like your furnace intake right there, your furnace air intake. Now, below the rear U portion, you have front outside pass-through storage, so you don't have to disassemble the dinette to get to it. And the fact that you don't have to, so they screw it down so you really can't, kind of just simplifies the equation quite a bit. Other little niceties you're going to find, and these are the extra little things that copycat brands don't do, are things like the nicer uh, blackout roller shades that you find in these Geo Pros. If you really want to blot out the sun, you can. And you do have a pull-down pleated shade for the front um, area as well. Now up top here, this is one of the things that we add to this. This is an optional piece of equipment, but a full 13,500 BTU low profile air conditioner. And I stress low profile, guys, because it will not increase the overall exterior height of this camper above anything else. Like I believe the max air vent cover above the bathroom is actually the very tallest point on the camper. So 
This gives you full air power without increasing overhead clearance. And can we just take a moment to appreciate the lighting package that they have in here? It is light, bright, and against the lighter uh, decor, it looks and feels bigger in here. And that's kind of the thing, guys, is that this is a seven wide camper that uh, has the same floor plan, the same weight, um, and just more space than a lot of these six and a half foot teardrop campers. And that's really what GeoPro has done is they've taken uh, a, a done-to-death market segment in that little six-and-a-half-foot-wide teardrop area, and they have just done it better. And I don't know if there's another place more obvious. Well, maybe the bathroom, but the, uh, the kitchen over here. Now, down below, well, first of all, on the right side of the screen, we've got a combination refrigerator-freezer. It is gas and electric, so you can use it whether you're in or out of the parks. And uh, down below here, we've got a convection microwave oven in the place that you'd find a traditional oven. What I think is cool about that is it gives you the ability, you can bake in that, by the way, but it, it cooks faster and it introduces less heat into the RV. So in a small space like this, the addition of any sort of heat is very quickly and obviously noticed, and this will help avoid that. By the way, before I get too far along, I do want to point out the fact that this is completely carpetless, which is very handy. And someone's going to ask, why did they put hinges on both sides of that door? And the answer is because that's an access panel to something, probably a water pump or something like that. Now, as I love to say, not an ounce of space gone to waste. They utilized every little chunk and nook and cranny they possibly could here. But um, something Rockwood's done for years, more successfully than any other brand in history, is a kitchen slide. They're very good at it. They've been doing it for years. You can look through the Rockwood Mini Light lineup and just see tons of kitchen slides. They're very good at what they do, the Rue series as well. And they understand that, um, you know, they, they camp, I think, and, and you can tell that by the way that they utilize the space. So they've got a huge three burner stovetop here, like you'd have in a bigger camper, not a little two burner surface above counter mounted stove. They've got a three burner recess stove to regain a lot of potentially lost prep space. And then if you notice here in this kitchen slide, look at how much space is behind the countertop. And that is what gives you a lot of extra prep area um, and uh, all sorts of, say, like appliance space and whatnot. Now you've got a nicer stainless sink because Rockwood does anything. It's that they do everything nicer. And then the nice chunk of space here above the... Um, refrigerator and in a lot of teardrop campers this is where you'd actually find the microwave they were able to give you more total cubic foot of storage space by moving the microwave below the stove which is very organic anyway because it feels like the oven should be there and this is up high where it's easier to access so that you don't have to constantly duck down low to get to all the storage um the uh other thing i really wanted to point out here in the kitchen is this combination closet pantry with these adjustable removable shelves. So uh, whether you need extra closet space or pantry space, a little bit of everything in between, the uh, the little GeoPro 16BH here, well, it can take care of you just about either way. And I feel like an infomercial on this one because I feel like saying, but wait, there's more. The good news is uh, for just shipping and processing, I'm not also going to send you the shoes under. but. This is a bunkhouse model, and at the end of the day, that's probably the key reason you're looking at this instead of the 19FD or the 19FBS GeoPro. So you've got a pair of single bunks. These are about 74 inches long, which is normal bunk length. But what I want to point out, the difference is on the Rockwood. Um, Jayco's also good for this, but they don't really build a model like this. And that is the, uh, the really thick uh, mattresses that you'll find in the back here. Rockwood and Jayco are both very good for using bigger, thicker mattresses. Now you see the full extension plywood box drawers uh, below that lower bunk. Um, this model is called a 16BH. You often see it referred to as a 16BHG though, and even Rockwood kind of is inconsistent on their nomenclature. Um, a lot of brands who build something like this, under the rear bunks you'll have something like a rear storage garage. Well there is storage under that bunk, but it's half inside, half outside. And I like how they utilize that to give you a little bit easier access. But notice, too, that they're actually including a ladder to the upper bunk. And notice that there's power outlets for each of the bunks to get in there uh, a lot more, uh, or pardon me, to entertain the kids more easily. Now, you do have little storage pockets at the headboard area of each of the beds for the kiddos or the guests or what have you. And I specifically wanted to leave the ladder here 
So you can see that you can easily access the bathroom even with the ladder there. So uh, at night you don't need to take the ladder on and off to get to this because of the extra amounts of space that you get in the Geo compared to some of the teardrops. It just makes it friendlier and easier. Now the vaulted ceiling and the skylight make this fairly tall person friendly. Now I'm six foot two or three and it's going to get a little tight for me. But you also, in a camper, spend minutes, if that, I mean, micro minutes here, in the shower, you know, taking what we refer to as kind of a military shower. You quick rinse, shut it off, and go. And that's one of the reasons why Rockwood has equipped us with what's called the shower miser, and that's this little guy right here. So basically, anytime you're dry camping, you can flip that little switch, and any of the water that would come through your shower when you're not, um, you know, soaping up your hair, it'll go back into the freshwater tank so that you sip your usage, not gulp. Now, the little things like the little shower caddy up here, you're going to hear me all the time in my Rockwood video say Rockwood doing Rockwood things because they always find a way to do a little more, a little extra. Kind of like the bigger Max Air vent fan up here. And by the way, have you noticed, guys, compared to a teardrop, this is a full dry bath where the toilet is not in the shower. That's a huge, huge difference compared to a lot of the teardrop type campers. For the same money, for the same weight, you can get a bigger camper with more storage and more features and a real bathroom. That's why GeoPro is on fire right now because they just have a dynamite package all placed together. So the bigger Max Air vent fan up here, what that's doing for us, it gives us whole house airflow. And uh, especially if you are boondocking, this will be one of your primary cooling methods. You can open those cross breeze windows that we have over here and kick on the fan up here in the bathroom, even with the bathroom door shut because you might notice how it is slotted. And that'll give us a nice six mile an hour breeze the whole time. Now, extra little details like the little... Um, towel ring, the uh, toothbrush and soap holders, that helps keep your counter space open. And then an intelligently placed sink makes this the most accessible countertop space that you could hope for in a little camper like this, and a pretty respectable amount of legroom in front of that toilet, even for a bigger fellow like me. Now compared to last season, the uh, TVs have become standard. But what's cool in Rockwood is they are both 110, meaning household powered, as well as 12 volt powered. So if you are going to go uh, boondock dry camping and just run off the antenna and get some over-the-air signal or something, this one can take care of you. Now, you might notice, you're, you're, like, you're like, hey, TV's not here. What's the deal? Well, I was actually camping last weekend when this one came in. I actually took a weekend to take my family out. We went camping, and it was fantastic. I don't just preach this stuff, guys. I actually go and do it. I wish I got to do it more. But you might notice this TV is actually on a swing arm. So if you do want to swing this TV out for easy viewing at the dinette, you can do so very simply and easily. Uh, nice little phone charger station here. Um, up above, we've got a Bluetooth stereo, not DVD, but the TV itself that comes equipped in the camper has an integrated DVD player. So it's a more efficient method of entertainment here. And then one other thing, well, two things I want to point out, and they kind of are related. First of all, we've got the Wi-Fi Ranger. This camper basically has a router built into the roof of it to help improve and, and increase local signal and accessibility off of uh, like park Wi-Fi sources or gas station Wi-Fi or anything. Oh, any open uh, signal it can get on, even like little cellular 4G sticks or whatever. And that is why I like to talk about the HDMI and USB f uh, mounted f uh, plugs on the face of the stereo right here. Because if you get one of those little streaming sticks, you can power it right here. And if you have local park Wi-Fi, you can help improve its signal so that you have a better, more reliable source for streaming media. Now you might notice too, even though we've got a picture over it here, this is a real window in the door, but you see that it does have a shade as well. So once again, every single corner of this thing was dressed and pressed and ready to rock and roll. And that's just GeoPro doing, again, Rockwood doing Rockwood things. They're just on the ball. Another update as compared to previous generations, and I'm calling this the Generation 3 GeoPro, is that uh, front windshield inset into the front nose cap. They've had that cap, but it did not have a windshield, and that appears to be standard now on everything except the Murphy bed GeoPro, with the reason being that the bed would cover up the window during the day. Um, Holy cow, where do I even start out here? There's a lot to cover. Okay, let's start with something that you can't see. And it's a huge part of what makes this thing work. And that is Asdell. 
And Asdale is a material that we're very familiar with here at Halet RV from like our Coachman Ultralights, the Freedom Express and the Apex. But um, Rockwood's never done a whole lot with it until the Geo Pro series came through. So I've mentioned how this is larger than, but basically the same weight and cost as, a lot of these little teardrop style things. Well, like, like an R-Pod for instance. Well, how do they do that? The answer is better materials to get the weight down because they certainly didn't skimp on the structure. And I'm going to demonstrate that later when I actually walk on the roof of this little thing because you see there is a rear uh, roof ladder on the back which is yet another of the more recent updates. You can walk on these. Um, so Asdell is used all over the construction of this thing, under the fiberglass skin, all over the place. Basically what it is, guys, is it's lighter than the Luon wood panels they'd normally put in the walls and things like that, and it helps keep the weight down. And the thing is with Asdell, it's not less expensive, but with Rockwood's buying power, they can just buy a ton of it and control the cost of it through sheer volume. But uh, it is the material itself cannot rot, mold, or mildew. So once again, this is awesome for... Uh, you know, primitive camp, dry camp type situations. Now we do have a power awning here with LED lighting. So you've got easy, and they put the biggest awning on it they could because if they extended the front awning arm out, it would actually cover that beautiful frameless window or mess with this uh, pass-through baggage compartment door and that is certainly not going to work. Your entry door here, a couple things. God, there's three things to talk about even on the entry door. We've got a keyless entry pad so you don't lose your keys if you go inner tubing or biking or whatever. It is an anti-slam door, and it's got the little screenshot uh, retractable band right here so that keeping the bugs out of the camper has never been easier. You've got the bigger entry handle for coming and going, and those awesome Moride adjustable stable steps right here. And the camper that I was using this last weekend had uh, a set of those, and man, I can't, I just can't be happier with them. I am such a big fan and proponent of those. Um, they keep the camper so sturdy and stable as you come in and out. I was camping with my mother, and she's got kind of a knee problem right now, and the extra stability from the steps made it just a lot easier for her to come and go, not to mention the fact that um, it, the uh, just the easy up and down nature of them, they're easier to, to, to mess with as compared to standard steel steps that swing in and out, you know. Um, over here, We've got our little uh, kind of outside grilling station. Maybe that's what the G stands for to some folks because, uh, you know, the uh, 16BH here maybe stands for kind of grilling station. Or it's a pseudo outside kitchen. But what I like is in a lot of the teardrop versions of a, a bunkhouse, you'll have the outside kitchen off the back of the camper. And that's not always very friendly on your campsite. This is where you usually want to be, though. Now, notice a couple things. You've got... Not uh, uh, a normal RVQ grill. You've got the nicer Coleman Camp grill. Uh, and that is much, much better when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, winds than a common RVQ grill. And you've got a nice little uh, weather-resistant rolled steel galvanized uh, work shelf here that you can uh, utilize that on. Now, if you're not in interested in this style of gas grill, Rockwood still includes a gas grill quick neck. That is not used for this but Rockwood gives you and instead of or, they give you both options. And then you got Dad's medicine cabinet out here, uh, keeping a couple extra cold drinks on hand. So this one actually has additional cold storage capacity as compared to most of the other Geo Pro models. Now down here, again, under the sections of the, the U dinette that you can't, you know, because they, they have the dinette base screwed down, but you don't need to lift all that because you can get to everything here. And I can't believe the number of people who have looked at that little panel up in the corner of previous Rockwood videos that I've done, and they've said, well, it looks like the panel's falling down. Guys, look at it. It is clearly just a shield to protect some wiring for things. It basically, that's where the switch for your docking lights are. So Rockwood puts a little shield right there so that shifting cargo doesn't rip up the wiring for your docking lights. It's, it's the opposite of falling apart. It's protection. <coughs> All right. Pardon me, I'm still, I'm kind of getting over a case of the crud here, but I'm on the, the mend, I think. Now, outside storage is at a premium here. So they give you a handy little sewer hose caddy right there so that you don't need to mix your sewer stuff with your fresh stuff. Now, we've got a simple side mount solar prep plug right there, but you also have standard factory installed roof solar panel on this. So you have dual solar. So um, if you're just parked in the sun, the roof panel is going to take care of you. If you're parked in the shade and you need to chase the sun a little bit, well, you've got the side mount plug. Kind of like they give you two ways of grilling, they give you two ways of soldering. 
That's not a word, but it made sense. So again, the front uh, tongue mounted bike rack that we're looking at here, the jacket bike rack, um, it is a optional piece of equipment. You can get factory installed here. And I mentioned we don't typically install that at Halet RV from the factory. So the natural question is why? And the answer is because we found that we can install that aftermarket for the exact same price that they can install it at the factory. Um, now, it was already installed from the factory when this one became available. So we said, yeah, leave it there. No sweat. And there's no sense in rocking the boat if it's already there. So most of the time, if you see this model in stock at Halet RV, it probably won't have that tongue-mounted bike rack. And I'd be really curious to know what people think about this off-road package because we have not found a huge demand for that um, on the larger Geo Pro models like this one here in the Midwest. But everybody camps different. So I'd love to know what you think about the bigger tire package, understanding that it does cost a little more money. And then also let me know what area of the country you're from because that can help me kind of get a better barometer of what we're doing here. Now the whole chassis is different on this for most Rockwoods. Kind of like most Rockwoods don't use Asdale. Most Rockwoods don't use a Norco chassis, which is lighter but stronger, not less expensive. Um, there's nothing wrong with traditional chassis, but to keep the weight down, and this is an ultra weight conscious product, you know, they give you a, 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 the same weight at a reduced, um, uh, you know, or at an increased body size. So they had to do some things, and I want to kill my battery box here because I've got a few other campers to catch up on since I was out for a couple days. No rest for the wicked. So these are narrow body, easy towing. Um, I haven't checked the specs on this. I believe it's less than 20 foot tip to tail. So, uh, you know, it's very easy towing, easy parking, take it anywhere. You've got a front wind shield, not window, but wind shield, which is a stronger type of glass. And then you've got, uh, it's basically the same type of thing going on as your car. It's got the same method of automotive install. Now we've got frameless uh, windows on the sides here. Those can tilt open for airflow and that max air fan can help overcome any potential airflow deficit frameless windows may suffer from. Then little stuff like this, they open up every little pocket they can on Rockwoods. And that's another example of just what I say, Rockwood doing Rockwood things. All centralized uh, hookups over here, which is really handy. Full outside utility shower, black tank flush to flush everything out. And you do have um, LED tail and marker lights, which is nice. So uh, they're, they're uh, longer lasting, they ignite faster, they're safer on the road. And there's the other half of the storage under the lower bunk you see off the back, an extra little storage compartment. Um, these are prepped and ready if you're looking for a backup or uh, in motion observation camera, just like the tongue mounted bike rack. That is something we found that we can accomplish for the exact same money as the factory locally here at our facility. And I think that pretty much wraps us up at ground level, other than the fact that I do want to mention that we do have four corner stabilizer jacks. And it, I, I mention that because it shocks me how many small campers only have rear jacks and that you need those front jacks to help keep this thing stable. Although those more ride steps as people come and go certainly don't hurt either. So as promised, I did want to take a minute to climb up here to demonstrate that this does have a walkable roof. That being said, I'm not going to move around a whole heck of a lot because it's not a big roof and I can see everything basically from here. <laughs> Again, the low profile air is not taller than the max air vent right here. So you can get the bigger air conditioner on this without increasing your overall height, which is very nice for getting into spots with a lot of tree branches or just like garage storage, you know. The uh, max air vent cover here gives you uh, anytime airflow with that big max air fan, including like rainy days. Um, you see those dual antennas whipping in the wind over there, as a country song once said. And that uh, gives you, that's the Wi-Fi range here. And that's another update. It, they've actually increased the, uh, the power and range and reception on that compared to last year. The 360 siphon cap, that's your black tank chimney exhaust right there. The idea behind that is to prevent uh, backflow of black tank odors into the camper. And they seem to do a good job because uh, brands like Jayco that have been using it, I don't hear that feedback from people. Um, and here is the roof mounted integrated solar panel, 100 watt uh, flexible solar panel. I suppose you could probably uh, add a few more of the little flex panels up here if you're so inclined. But this is something I really wanted to get into because once again, not a lot of little campers, oh, well not, a, uh, some, some do, some don't, it just depends, but not all little campers have walkable roofs and we've got enough different varieties of RVs here at Halet RV that I know, you know, the differences between A to B to C. But almost none of them that even do have walkable roofs have uh, a roof ladder like this. So I want to get up here and be able to take a big look around and demonstrate the just the extra strength and solidarity in the Rockwood brand. So if this all looks fun to you, 
Give us a call, 800-256-5196. Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.